Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Okay, so let me let me ask you guys this. Obviously, there's a lot of things. I'm sure people are assuming what Kevin's going to want to talk about, maybe what you know, myself or Rolando want to talk about. Uh, what's on top of you guys' minds right now? Obviously, there's a ton of things going on in the world, stuff going on in America, right? What's on top of your mind right now? Go ahead, Rolando. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I, it's definitely what's been going on in, uh, in Minneapolis with uh, George Floyd and his murder. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that really goes without saying. I've been watching KD uh, this week, uh, really talk about it, and mm -hmm. and I, I I don't think that there's anything that I can say that he has not really explained and and verbalized uh, mm -hmm. uh, that that we can feel, especially the emotion behind it. And again, that's that's where the facts and the emotions you can feel both things. Mm -hmm. So this is really a situation that uh, it saddened me not only because of his murder, but really the reactions that we've seen from. The second, not just the Second Amendment community, but the same things that we always see from the media, the politicians, mm -hmm. and people trying to take advantage of what's a tragic situation, and you know, really muddying the waters with everything like that. And I think that's really what makes things very painful in this situation. Seeing all of that mm -hmm. uh, more than anything else, at least for me, and and I know my wife, uh, you know, she's been really bothered by this as well. So, okay, what's the thing that bothers you guys the most, like? You know, what is it? Is there, is it looking at that video? It, you know, what is it that bothers you? Is it reaction from people around you or people at work? Like, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, figure out exactly what it is. What's the button that gets pushed there? Rhonda, you can keep going. Uh, oh, well, okay. Uh, obviously, when I first saw it, mm -hmm. You know, I felt uh, anger and rage to see, you know, an American citizen just being murdered by an enemy of the state and seeing his, you know, fellow officers basically turn it. Well, not basically. They were turning a blind eye. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were while this man is pleading for his life, you know, his life is, you know, he's losing his life there. He calls out for his mother, mm -hmm. which for, a, you know, for a grown man to do is, is you know, <laughs> That's just something that hits you, especially as another man. You always know mm -hmm. that, you know, in your time of need, you do call out for your mother. Uh, KD's talked about that, and that's just something that that really – that's the first thing that hit me emotionally. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, the – either the, the crowd not being able to do anything or not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But, you know, never never being witness to that, I, I don't know. I, I really would like to think that I would have helped – but you you never know uh, mm -hmm. when you're there, and then obviously everything that's happened afterwards is uh, just exacerbated things. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, I I think Michael's. Uh, let me see. I think we got him. Let's yep. see if we can. Yeah, it looks like we got him here. I'll I'll throw us all into the mix. What's up, Michael? Hey, what's going on, man? Sorry for the confusion. I don't know what was going on with this <laughs> it's connection. All good. It was like. <laughs> It's all good. Okay, that huge that huge window behind you is gonna kind of mess up the light. I don't know if there's any way to either throw some light on more light on your face. Okay, so while he's getting set up here, the reason why I'm trying to figure out exactly why I don't want to speak for Kevin, um, really, we've had these conversations before, Kevin, right? And right. And, and we're a little bit older than uh, these two gentlemen that are here, so. I'm just really trying to figure out how people coming into the space that we're in right now as gun guys are looking at this thing. How are younger people looking at this and how is it going through their brain? Is it the same thing as us? Is it different? Are we jaded, Kevin? Because, you know, we've been here before. Um, exactly how how does it feel when you can, when you look at it from uh, a generational point of view? All right, you want to let Mike answer that? From yeah, the yeah, Mike. If you want to, if you want to chime in, we're talking about, um, you know, obviously what George a lot Floyd. of people are talking about nowadays. George Floyd, the uh, the uh, the murder of him by the police officer in Minneapolis, as well as all the riots and everything going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all the riots going on around the country right now. You know, we had that sure. paramedic as well that they did a no knock raid. 
on her place. Yeah. And I'm trying. I'm, I really want to figure this out. From my point of view, I can see lots of gun people. Most gun people are not happy with this, but I, I want to know how the 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 younger gun folks out there feel about it before Kevin and I jump in. Um. Well, from my generation point of view, I, like again, I, we talked about this before. I don't. I feel like my way of thinking is a little bit different, but I try to keep. Um, personally, I try to keep a lot of that uh, that energy. I don't try to take in too much of that because I feel like it's a bad thing. But looking at that and looking at everything else that's going around and just in the country right now, uh, it's definitely hard, and it makes. Uh, it definitely makes us think, you know, just as young folks, you know, it makes us think um, twice about, you know, even just how you deal with uh, police and your interactions with, you know, law enforcement and, you know, anyone of authority, you know, to you. It definitely makes us look look at them differently. But it's, it's, it's hard. I think I'm kind of biased because I grew up around so many police officers and, you know, things like that in my family. But even even in that case, I feel like what happened to George, I, I just think it's just terrible, man. It's, uh, that was definitely uh, murder, uh, flat out. Um, I, was, I was watching uh, KD's live video uh, a few days ago, and he, you know, kind of broke down. And, you know, I, even on, on, on the other end, I kind of broke down, man, because he kind of hit on all those points. You know, it, it's, it's, it's terrible, man. It's, Does it, uh, I, I is, say, it, is it compounded for you because... You know, you know, so many police officers is is does that make it more difficult? How, and, and and the people who are fam, uh, in your family that are police officers, have you communicated with any of them about this? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, those are the first people I actually talk to because they look at it. and even even my family, because, you know, it doesn't matter. Even them, they agree. That's murder. That was wrong. It was flat out wrong. I feel like uh, it was so many different things. I like to get their point of view mm-hmm. one because for one, they're African-American, almost 90 percent of them. Mm-hmm. And two, you know, they're police officers so and they have that and their job is hard mm-hmm. uh but even them they you know they, they they felt like you know they it's so many protocols that they have and so many different rules and you know regulations and things they have to go by mm-hmm. as police officers and um it was so many rules that were broken and so many things that he could have done differently because it is his job to protect and serve the community i feel like he did not have the protection the protection part went completely out his window it's it, I, I would say almost 80% of the officers, and I, speaking to my uh, a lot of my relatives that are in law enforcement and friends that are in law enforcement, they told that you know, they told me that they feel like almost 85% of law enforcement officers in that community, for one, they don't even live there a lot of times, but they feel like they are disconnected with the community. 85% mm-hmm. of officers almost feel like they're disconnected with the community, which is that is the problem because their job is to protect and serve the community. And I felt like in this time, in this generation, and what's going on right now, they lost that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of, and anyone could feel free to jump in here. The the protect and serve part of it, as we all know, and I'm sure lots of people out there are thinking, do is that that's kind of like a urban legend or a myth, right? They don't really have an obligation to protect and serve, so we kind of have to ask, like, what actually is the job? going on here but the part the the part that i just i just want to get into this a lot of times when things happen people like this when something happens and it's related to police officers a lot of people tend to think that most police officers looking at that don't care about that and i i'm just gonna say i don't really think that's true i've been through some things myself i've seen lots of things i talk to police officers um, mm-hmm. All the time we have them come on here, they look at that and they get just as mad as we do, for the yeah, most oh, part. Yeah. You know, even yeah, though even though we have true. some we have some clearly bad actors out there, and even a lot true. of times I think other officers know when there's bad apples among them, right? I, I don't know, yeah. Kevin. You've you've been in law enforcement. What do you think about that? So. Uh, to your to your media point, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you know, um, here here's where I'm going to be extremely fair because we have to be in these conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the the job is what the job is, and can you always help who went through your academy class with you? Can you help who you get assigned to? Can you help who you work with? Mm-hmm. You cannot. Mm-hmm. All those things are out of your control. Mm-hmm. And can you and most of the other individuals that are getting in those cars every day? 
have the best intention, yes. Might you still make a mistake even with the best intentions? I think we all do. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I think that's a human thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you absolutely have evil, murderous people that just tend to hide behind a job of service, we have to still be able to call those people out. And I believe where the good officers, the ones that actually show up and want to do a good job, catch slack at is you allow that to happen. And this is a prime example of that, mm -hmm. right? So when you look at everybody that's, that's held to a high regard with people, look at priests, right? Mm -hmm. Priests that actually did, and I don't mean just making fun and jokes about, you know, all Catholic priests, but the priests that did when all that was coming out, I mean, that's horrible because you took a position of power and a position of trust and you violated people. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit different than if me and Michael walking down the street or me and Rolando walking down the street and we get into a fist fight. Like we don't have an obligation to each other mm -hmm. immediately, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's a little bit different than when somebody of a authority figure actually takes advantage of their position of power uh, that they should guide properly. And and so with that, when people say, well, the, the, the good cops, you know, uh, the good cops aren't there to stop it. Well, let's take this 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 situation for an example. Mm -hmm. um, many people haven't seen the photo that actually showed that it was three police officers on top of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. You had the one on the neck, one right around his lower back, and one on his legs. And he was in handcuffs. Mm -hmm. um, here's the thing. And I, I said this on my live, if I'm being totally honest. My job was to deal with detainees. That is what I did. I went hands-on more times than I can count. I guarantee you I went hands-on more time than your average patrol officer. Flat out. Mm -hmm. I went hands-on. Um, can you get upset in your course of duty? And even when I was working in the public sphere arresting people, can you get upset in the course of your duty, your job? Yes. It is a human thing you can get upset. Let me be very honest. You can only be so many MFers. You can only be so, you can only hear I'm going to kill you so many times. Yeah, sometimes you have a bad day and you react. But here's the thing. If I'm ever in a situation where I'm on top of somebody who's under control and I'm going overboard, my coworkers are tapping me saying that's enough. Mm -hmm. My coworkers yeah. are grabbing me saying that's enough. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with them. If I see, because my job is not just to protect the public, even though that's my that should be what I'm out there to do first, I also need to protect you from yourself. Mm -hmm. Yo, man, we're done. That's enough. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Get off his neck. Don't hit him again. Whatever the situation may be. Is so it, isn't that the point of a team? <laughs> exactly. Isn't this why you have a team? team be right. right. It's you no know, different. And I tell people all the time, man, look, if I get somebody coming in and they like, I can, I'm with so many MFs and they lay hands on me, I'm probably going to black out and go ham on right? Although I know what I'm doing. But if you see me as a team member, if Hank, if you go, all right, the dude's under control and Kevin's still going, I ex for you mm -hmm. to come over, grab me by the collar, hell, put me in a chokehold, grab me by my leg, whisper in my ear, whatever you think needs to be done to make sure I don't go overboard. Mm -hmm. That's just realistic. Mm -hmm. People don't want to believe that. Oh, well, you know, hey, you're not supposed to have a bad day. B.S. <laughs> you will absolutely. Or some people, have a bad day. some people see those kinds of things as disrespect or something like that, right? Like it's disrespectful or something. But no, I mean, in, in, in these types of situations, hey, if that's what it takes to wake that person up, you know, if they're, in, if they're inside of something that they just can't get out of on their own, hey, if it, if it takes disrespect to get you out of it, then that's what it has to be. Because once we go here, once you take someone's life, you can't give it back. You can't give it back. And, you and know? people always, and I get it because guns are a thing. But people always think the only way to kill an individual is with a with a weapon that's not naturally attached to your body. You can absolutely kill a person with your hands. Yeah, that is absolutely possible, right? Yeah. So when you are when you're, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but when you are going down that avenue, and you are constantly becoming out of control. I mean, we got several minutes where you're doing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We got the little the little fellow Tao just standing there, you know, basically assisting in a murder preventing people from getting over there stopping them. When the crowd had that one small moment where you can tell they were all kind of coming forward, mm -hmm. and that's when uh, Shelby yanked out his mace, the guy that was on his neck yanked out his mace, and then the crowd immediately stood back because from their position, if they do something, they're probably going to get shot. That's probably what they're thinking, right? So you can't win for losing, but when, when you got three other people that were sworn to protect mm -hmm. that are in immediate area and they still allow that man to be murdered in front of them, 
Tell me how the community at large is going to trust when, what good cop. If I get you by yourself, yeah. But if the bad cop shows up, if you are taking a back seat to him, then, brother, you're no, you're no help. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. absolutely no help. Yeah. And, uh, Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.